Okay, so hello everyone. Thanks for joining today's webinar. Uh, we are still waiting for a couple of people to join today's uh, meeting, but we are starting very soon. So get comfortable, um, take a seat, grab a cup of coffee or tea, and please make sure to mute your microphone. Um, later during the session, you can ask question, questions. So please use the Q&A feature located at the bottom of your screen. And um, I will moderate the questions and will select some of the most relevant ones um, during the session. Um, yeah, so let's wait a couple of minutes and then we get started. Okay, I can see our guest speaker is getting ready as well. So I think uh, we can start. A warm welcome again to all of you to today's webinar on song composing and how to find great sounds for your song. It's the second webinar of our webinar series and uh, we are excited to have all of you here today. My name is Lynn Radke. Uh, some of you know me already from the previous webinar and I'm the project manager for Songs for Rights and coordinating also the Songs for Change program. Um, today we will dive into the world of song composing and we will explore various tips and tricks that you can use to take your music to the next level. And I'm joined by my colleague Jochen Schell, who will introduce himself uh, shortly. And we have uh, Rianne again with us today as our guest speaker. Uh, probably you know her from the previous webinar as well. Um, happy to have you here today. Um, before we are starting, I would like to give you a little overview of what we can expect in today's webinar. Um, after a short introduction, Ryan will share with us her expertise on song composing, which will be followed then by a Q&A session where we will address your questions today. So now, uh, handing over to Jochen. Yeah, thank you, uh, Lynn. I am Jochen Schell. I'm uh, the director and founder of Songs for Rights, and um, I'm very happy to um, co-host this webinar. Um, uh, Rianne is our guest speaker today. We uh, introduced her um, in the webinar one, but just very shortly, Rianne is a musician, composer, and uh, a songwriter, uh, and has been uh, writing songs for the last 10 years. Um, we had a really fantastic first webinar where she um, uh introduced us into the writing of lyrics and uh, gave us uh, tips from her experience as a songwriter and today we're looking at the um, musical part and putting uh, music to the lyrics and we're very excited and super thankful um thank you ryan uh, rian uh, for mm -hmm. being with us again today and i hand it over to you already and um as I said, we're very excited to hear more. Well, I'm hoping I can help you guys out. Let's see. Let's see how this one goes. Thank you for inviting me also for this part. I'm really thrilled that you didn't just ask me for either writing or composing, because I, as I already said, these two, they go really hand in hand. And as the process of writing a song is really like polishing a diamond, um, it's really like going back and forth from the words to the melody and back and forth. And during this process, you can keep changing or leaving things out or adding on or like, it's really, uh, it's quite a messy process. But uh, if you do it going along with the flow and having confidence in the end result and staying true to whatever draw you to writing the song in the first place, then it's a very... A rewarding process as well and one that you can really enjoy so uh, last uh, webinar I showed you guys how I went from this idea for a song to the text that might or might not become the chorus of a song uh, and so what I will start off with now is showing you guys how I worked with this idea and how I started putting music underneath this um, just also to show that there is not one right tone for words or like one right atmosphere for a song. Um, I made two versions of this chorus. Um, one in which I started playing the piano 
and following the melody that I actually had in my head. I don't know if you guys remember when I read out the chorus, I was already making this little side uh, sentences, which I actually did in both ideas. So I have one idea on the piano, and then I also wrote another version of the chorus on the guitar. Um, I will have to change my microphone settings now so you guys can hear me well. I will do it straight away. So just as with the writing the uh, words part, this is a first idea for like a melody, right? So it might remind you of a lot of pop songs, which is because me, just like all of you guys, we're very much, uh, we have the patterns in our head that we get from listening to music. So me as a person having grown up here in the Netherlands and listening to radio stations over here, I have very like pop related melodies uh, as a starting point in my head. So th this might remind you of various other songs. It's actually based on the Ford four chord progression, which some of you might be familiar with. It's like four chords that are used for hundreds of pop songs. Um, and I am also using these four chords in the first version that I made on, uh, on the piano. Right. Can you guys hear me like that? Yes? of this version of the song it's like um uh it's not too rebellious or something it's like a uh I, I feel it's like a person who's getting ready to go out on the street but who's not very used to doing it it's not an aggressive kind of tone that i'm setting and you hear that it's a very familiar kind of melody at least like let me check with the linen yoch this is like something that you're like oh yeah I, I absolutely yeah me of. so probably i will not end with this as my chorus, because I too like, I like it when there's like part of me in, inside of this thing. So I will be looking, whilst I keep on polishing this, I will be looking for a chord maybe, or a melody or an extension of something to make it more mine and less general. But I quite like the way it's flowing right now and the way it's going. And as you see, I already like took out some lines. They didn't fit anymore. The show what's wearing you down it, I couldn't get it into this thing. Um, now, also good for you to notice is what happens if I speed it up. So I'm doing exactly the same thing. I'm just going to speed it up. So you get like the sense of, oh yeah, this is what happens if I change the speed of my song. So here we go. <laughs> Cannot take it anymore. More than scream and shout. Streets are where you'll find the space to express what you truly care about. So let's go out. It's time to let it out. All right. So you can change with these kind of things too. Now I'm going to go to the second version of the same text, put on a different chord scheme. Guitar. It's also like if you play multiple instruments or if you're playing with people who play multiple instruments, it's really nice. Like every instrument will give you different kind of vibes or different inspirations to play. You see, so I wrote a second version of the same words uh, on the guitar. Also, same thing, like it, it's not finished, but I, it is a starting point. And you will notice different things, like I am using different kinds of chords. And also this version of the chorus is really like building up towards something. So it starts small and we're really building up towards the climax at the end, as you will hear. Um, so let me play it first and then I'll 
tell you guys a little bit about how I ended up here. Okay. It's time to go out. My diary's too small. Have to let it all out. Cannot take it anymore. More than scream and shout. The streets are where you'll find space to express what you truly care about so let's go out yeah let's go out so when i was goofing around with this one thank you <laughs> yeah that sounds much more like you yes it does right i was actually yes. pretty happy as well Yeah, and, and still like, the, um, uh, yes, it does sound more like me. It's also because I write a lot on the guitar and not so much on the piano. And most of the times my first ideas are very much linked to a pop song. And then the second time I try something, it becomes much closer to me. But do like I did need to do this one first uh, on the piano and the one that was in my head, actually, with a high voice like the, the thing. Yeah, I had to get it out. Sometimes you have to get it out of your system as well so you can start something new. So the thing that I really like about this, the second per, uh, version, is that it starts off really small, so you can kind of play with the dynamics, right? Like you start off uh, soft and slow. And what happened while I was making this and while I was working towards this kind of climax, I found out, yeah, as I was going, was that actually the uh, let's go out, it became the title of the song, right? Like it's the, the phrase at the end that the whole thing builds up to. So now I feel like I have a title. And the title is like, let's go out. And so my verses I know are also going to be about, perhaps it's going to be about people uh, who are scared to go outside or who are like uh, thinking or overthinking, like what should I do? Or I don't know what to do, or maybe I'll leave it to other people or I have my own worries. Um, and then every chorus will be like, no, we should go out, let's go out, you know? So I really feel like by, by having this melody, suddenly I have the title and I have the essence. Well, before it was just, you know, remember I was just starting off with the, the whole brainstorm of my diary is too small, which is just like now it's a sideline of this chorus that I wrote. So this is where I stand right now. As you notice, again, uh, the last two lines have gotten out. Um, and the, the place where I feel like I might change some words, it's the streets where you'll find the space to express because it's like, it seems like a lot of words. So either I'm going to try making it rhythmical so it actually becomes like a goofy original thing of mine like normally maybe people would cut it out to make it like very much like this but maybe i'll leave it in because it's like very much i can make it my own or i'll work on that and see if i can change it and compress it so it fits more with the music but this is like where where right now i would stick as uh, indeed with the second one because i like it and then i would work now um either on writing some verses or see if I can find more words to to elaborate and on this idea of like uh, going out expressing yourself like taking that freedom uh, or I would just keep jamming and see whatever melodies or maybe a riff or maybe a rhythm or something that I really feel goes with this one or leads to this point because that might also help me find the words so Yeah, this is my example of how I would go from this little text idea to making music. Thank you, Rian. It's, uh, it's amazing um, uh, to see the different steps and also the different variations and the different um, directions uh, it, it can take, you know. So it's and it's also, didn't you feel like when we went in the webinar, when, when I showed you the text and you were like, all right, but this is not really... Maybe you were like, okay, is this it? Is this going to be a song? Like, uh, how does it, how's it going to work? Because written text on a piece of paper, it doesn't look too impressive. Like, that's what I meant with my uh, tip in the last webinar. Like, it really becomes impressive as well, or becomes meaningful when you add the dynamics or you add the voice, you know, and yeah. the singing voice is so powerful. Mm -hmm. I also was impressed, like, what kind of different emotions were transmitted towards me. Like, with a oh. piano, there were different emotions which I got than with a... Yes, yes. Also, yeah. Audience. Nice. Tip 10, trust in the power of music. 
Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, as you noticed, like I just ended up uh, with like court schemes, and maybe you're wondering how do you how do you make a court scheme? Mm, and these things they are a little technical and a little complicated. But where you can always start is by just putting two chords that sound nice to you behind each other. So I'll give you an example of a song that doesn't exist. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna do it right now. So maybe I, I really like this chord, for example, yeah. So I find a strumming pattern, uh, something in which I can repeat the chord in a in a groovy way. So I'll may, maybe doing it like So now I'm going to look for a second chord that goes nice with this. And this is a bit of music theory that you kind of learn which ones go nice or not. But most people who play a little bit of guitar, they will know that B minor goes nicely with a G or with an A or with a D. But let's go back to the main one. So I have this one that I really like. And I have this one that I really like as well, yeah? So if I just keep grooving with these two, then you might start to hear, like, I can hear myself singing in my head. I don't know if you guys have it too, but if you hear yourself in some way singing, then that voice is just something you can follow. It's like a friend. So mine is doing, is doing this one. Da, 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 da. Starts very small. And if I keep singing this one, so this is how I go about it. So I find the first two chords. So in the, in the case of the, it's time to go out. I actually found two chords that are not usually together. It's, it's the E major and the B minor, but I like the sound of it. And then if I, I liked it and then I was like, okay, so what notes can I find that go with it? And that's how I found the, it's time to go out. I die a place too small, got to let it all out. Cannot take it anymore. And then if you get bored of these two chords, then you're like, okay, so what's the, the third one? Where, where does this melody want to go? And if the melody brings you somewhere where you don't want to go, then you find another chord. That's basically the, the rule. And then you can change the melody. I hope this is not too technical and hope it kind of helps. Definitely. It's a really good tip, I find. Hmm. Yeah, great. You also talking about tips. You yeah. um, you prepared again ten tips for us. <laughs> yes. So uh, to tell you guys a little bit more about how I put music to my words or how I make a song, so add the element of music, I once again wrote down ten tips and I will walk you through them. So tip number one: imagine the song before it is there. Now this is a very cool. Uh, mental exercise that you can do uh, and it's when this is not one that you always have to do but it's one that can help you like once you have imagine that you started off writing texts and you have a bunch of it like you have a whole paper full of text uh, and you're like okay so now I'm gonna put music to this then it might help you to imagine the style or the speed uh, or the kind of band that will be playing it in your head so this is really cool because you can actually imagine yourself being accompanied by a string quartet or by uh, like a drum band or by or you want to you want to imagine people dancing on your song or being like the slow head like this thingy and it it really it kind of depends on the words that you wrote down and sometimes it's very clear if it's like a uh if you wrote like, um, how do you say that, an anklacht it's called in Dutch, if you're fighting for something or you're protesting for something in your song, then it might be weird to imagine the string quartet and a, like a, da, 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 
kind of melody with it and maybe it really needs like the doof like a beat um, but for other songs especially when it becomes like very small or personal or something that uh, really touched you or made you very sad then it's like weird to imagine the drum band or the the salsa vibes so imagining the theme or the genre or the speed uh, it might help you um, when you start to sit down and adding music to already have a framework a little bit and you can go wild in your head which is really cool you can imagine whatever you want all right let's go to tip number two this might be familiar just start <laughs> once again don't don't spend too much time looking at your piano staring at your guitar uh, and also I've seen this happen quite sometimes. I even experience it myself that you start and then ever after every chord, you're like, no, 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 this is not good. And then you start and you're like, no, this is not good. No, this is not good. It's good also at this part to just go for a little bit. Like sometimes these ideas have to get out of your system or sometimes it's just a thing that lies on top, right? Like just flow with it because it might bring you to something that you do like. So just start. Uh, you can start with a beat, uh, you can start with uh, a melody that doesn't have chords, or you start with the chords. It doesn't really matter, but this step of going from the paper to your ears, don't wait too long with it. Like you don't have to be completely done with the text. It doesn't have to be perfect straight away. So just intertwine these two processes. All right, tip number three. Nothing is set in stone. So uh, this example that I just gave where I, I played this thing on the piano, uh, it's a, an idea that I can work out and it's also an idea that I can let go. You know, maybe this is not the right words for this melody. or Maybe this melody is not a melody that I want to continue working in. Uh, nothing at any point during this process is something you have to continue. And you will feel this at least with me, it's very, it's talking to me very clearly, my instinct or my intuition. Um, it's telling me uh, whether I am, whether I'm in the flow or I'm falling out of the flow, whether it's something that I get excited about or something that I'm not liking too much. So take that sentiment, if you're feeling it, that little voice in the back or that feeling in your stomach, take it seriously, but don't let it be the voice of uh, self-criticism. All right. So there's a difference between having a gut feeling of, oh, I'm really onto something or the voice that tells you I'm not good enough. So listen to the one, don't listen to the other one and know that nothing is set in stone. You can always continue working on it. Tip number four, listen to your gut feeling. Oh my God, it's almost like the same thing. This is like the part, uh, it's, a, it's a nice one because I'm going to turn it positive here for a while. So if you are playing your instrument or humming a melody, you will notice that it's changing all the time. Like you, that, that it's not like, a, it's forming, you're flowing with it. And at some point you found something that you just want to keep repeating you're like and it, it will repeat automatically in your head or your fingers will keep on doing it and you really like it you're like oh yes now this feeling of the yes that can come out of any improvisation sometimes it's only like 30 seconds of a six minute improvisation uh, that you really like and if you have this thing that you keep repeating in your head or maybe if you've taken a break uh, that it's still in your head or if you wake up the next morning you have like dum, bum, ba, da, dum, da, dum, and it's still there then that is a good feeling and a good uh, sign for you that you're onto something and that this is something that you can construct further on so listen to that gut feeling tip number five make recordings or notes of what it is that you do and what it is that you like now, even though the best ideas are the ones that stick with you, even though you don't make any recording or you don't write it down, I have lost an insane amount of potential nice ideas because I thought I would remember it. So it 
does make sense to with your phone it can be a very shitty recording but it does make sense to make a little recording of what it is that you're doing to always be able to go back to now this applies both to when you feel you're onto something but also for the improvisations the jams that you do in which you're just like I don't know playing a chord scheme for five minutes it's always nice to make a recording of it because in these five minutes you'll hear yourself do something really cool that you're like oh this is what I really like and so you can learn and extract from your own wild improvisations just these elements that you really like and that can only work if you wrote it down somewhere or you made a recording also this applies for like nice melodies write them down or make a recording because it's such a pity if you cannot remember it anymore you feel so bad so don't do that make recordings tip number six yes combine catchy ideas on your instrument with humming so I'm just assuming for this tip that you started off playing something uh, which is not a melody. So you just started off playing chords. Now chords, they, they, they create a world already. For me, like if you combine the chords or a drum pattern and maybe a bass line, it's like creating the, the background of a painting. It's already giving a lot of information. Like you already have like the general landscape of the whole scene but the melody is what's gonna bring detail and personality to your song so if you have a nice chord progression and maybe it has a rhythm or a beat already going along with it then the only thing that it really needs you already have some words or you have these things the only thing that you need is a melody because the melody it's it's really like the personality uh, of a song and this melody like I said before it, it might be something that already lives inside your head at least this works for me this way if you don't have a little voice uh, singing inside your head that you can follow um, yeah if you don't have that then what do you do then you might be able to to find a melody on the piano or on a flute or on you have like the the instruments that are melodic instruments and accompanying instruments right so if you know someone for example who plays saxophone or or a clarinet or a flute or any instrument with which you can only play one note these are melodic instruments and they are very used to playing melodies so if you cannot figure it out yourself, you might want to ask one of those people to play along with your cool uh, chord scheme in order to find a melody. Yeah, and otherwise I would suggest humming and not being scared of what it is that you hum. Like just go with it and don't be judgmental. Like it doesn't have to be beautiful immediately. All right, tip number seven. Once you have a groovy idea, you can construct all other parts of the song from this idea. All right. Yes. It's already put a little uh, hard, maybe, the way it's put here. And it is quite technical. Um, but it's I mean this as a tip. Yeah. So if, if it's only confusing you, then, then leaving it, leave it out. But if you're a little bit familiar with music theory, then my tip is that if you are writing something you have a little part and then it's already in a certain key or it has like a, a, a chord which is the homecoming chord so this homecoming chord um, that's like the the main key for the song from this main chord you can derive all kinds of chords that go nicely with it um, and so for example in the piano piece that I played I was having the chord progression D B minor G A the homecoming chord was D major now I have my chorus based in G uh, D major uh, and so if I want to write a verse I can just distract one of the chords that are around D major and start writing my verses on that so for example my verses will be B minor G B minor A B minor G B minor A and then I would land back on poof on the D for my chorus now this is just an example uh, people who 
play instruments or are familiar with chords, they will know that uh, which are the chords that go well uh, with uh, the main chord of your song. Also, you can find a lot about this on the internet. Just know that once you have a chorus, the verses are not too far away. You don't have to like be uh, going to a complete new key or a complete new rhythm or a complete new. Mostly the information for the verses is already in the choruses. So it's just a little sidestep. Then for the bridge, because you might be familiar with this idea that most pop songs have like verses and a chorus and a bridge. So the general structure would be a verse, then a chorus, then a verse, then a chorus, then a bridge, and then the chorus, for example. Now the bridge is also, the chords from the bridge are usually kind of connected to the main key of the song but this is the place where you do take a little further sidestep so you can change the rhythm or you can change the the keys for a little bit as long as you be able to poof land it back to the chorus in case you're writing a song with a group of people you will have people who are more into music more into writing uh, and Hopefully you'll be blessed with someone who plays a solo instrument in your group as well. So what you can do is once you have the chorus and everyone knows what the chorus is, and then you will start working on the verses, which is like, again, the ingredients are already in the chorus. So you just take a few chords or you're like a sidestep. And then if you ask the solo player to write a simple melody, like an introduction to the song or a musical intermezzo, like a melody that goes on top of these verses. This will also inspire the people who are writing the verses with a possibility for a melody. So in that sense, you're splitting the responsibilities a little bit. So the people writing the verses are not also having to think from scratch, like what is the melody going to be for my verse? They can kind of lean on the melody as provided by the musicians who were making the intermezzo or the solo or the introduction of the song. All right, let's go to tip number eight. Yes, here we are again. Yeah, it's an important element of the whole process of writing a song, giving it time, um, sitting with it for a bit, not expecting it to pop out of nowhere and the time that you are going to give it is also going to allow you to hear the song that you're writing. You're very attached to this thing that you're writing, but to kind of hear it with new ears or from an outsider perspective, almost as though you're hearing it for the first time as well, if you let it sit for a little bit. And then if you pick it up after a few days, you will hear maybe something that you don't really like or that doesn't feel good. And it can be a melodic thing or a word thing or a chord thing that you don't really like. Or maybe you don't like the speed of it and you want to try it just a little slower or faster or with a different strumming. Um, the giving it time, it will help you be playful with the thing that you're writing uh, and will let you enjoy the thing that you're writing in many different forms because you're goofing around with it, right? Like it's, and there's no time pressure. There's no like deadline. Actually for me, it really helps to have a deadline. So in case you're just lingering on and you cannot manage to get yourself to the point where you're like, <laughs> I should decide on something, then putting a deadline might work, but in general also give it time. It's a balance between these two. All right, tip number nine. Ask for help, feedback, or company of other musicians. Now, this is just for me, like, I I used to think that writing a song was very, like, private. And I used to feel very comfortable just writing my songs alone in my bedroom. And only, like, bringing it out once I felt it was, like, almost done. But, in fact, I have come to experience the joy of uh having the input of other people and giving the song that you're writing wings like the you can just take off just because someone 
joins in playing conga and you're like oh my god now it has a beat or someone picks up a bass and suddenly you get like the ba- like you get fundament you get like earth underneath you or uh if someone plays a solo on top of a chord progression that you made it's such a wonderful feeling and you really start to feel like more than just your song it's a song that you're doing with other people that has like more strength more power so don't hesitate jamming with people and making your song our song uh unless you want your song to be extremely small right which can be your preference if you're writing something with just a tiny bit of music in a very fragile atmosphere then it's maybe not a good idea to ask the drummer to uh, to join in but if you write something that wants to be like a statement that you want to be able to really put forward to an audience or you want people to join in on this message that you're putting in then the musician that you're going to play with and that are going to give their input from their expertise they're going to elevate your song to a whole new level so don't miss out on that and then tip number 10 Yes. Have confidence in the power of your song. So I ended webinar 1 saying have confidence in the power of music, uh which is also in this one, right? A song is an extremely powerful way to put forward a thing that you truly care about or a thing that you feel so related to. Um and because it's music and it's universal it touches people on different lengths they can listen to your words but they can also feel your energy or feel the energy of the other musicians um and it's conveying more than just the words um and don't underestimate the power not just of music but of your song so the fact that you went through this whole process of writing and composing and putting these elements together and polishing up your diamond and including other people or growing into this kind of i am this is my song this is my sound this is the speed this is the right notes for this and then having to like finalize it finish it up and playing it either live or recording it and sh- sharing it with other people it's such a powerful thing because the people who listen to it they did not they were not part of the whole process in which you were falling and standing up and struggling and taking showers and and throwing away this paper and starting again and like the only thing that they hear is that you landed that you made it right like and that there is this thing that did not exist like at the beginning there was nothing then you got inspired and went through this whole process and now there is a song and it's a song that you feel so confident about that you are sharing it so the the fact that you made it to that point and that you're sharing it it's such a powerful thing that you should not underestimate uh and it will touch people around you and also the people who will get to know about your song because it's something that came completely uh uh honestly from you from within so these are my 10 tips thank you rian uh it couldn't have been on a better end note uh don't underestimate uh how strongly you can uh, touch people with yes. with your song with your music it's um, it's uh, fantastic Thank you so much. I also like the picture of um, or, or this statement of that the rhythm and the beat is the the background of your painting and yes. then that the chorus uh, adds personality and details to it. Um Yes. Lovely yes, tips. Where... Thank you very much. Yeah, welcome. Also from my side and taking us with you on the journey of writing the song and creating a song. And also, um, I myself learned a lot, but also our audience uh, agrees as the comments are showing. And mm-hmm. 
I'm sure they will also benefit from your tips as they pursue their own music project. So thank you very much. Um, exactly, we got some nice questions. So uh, we are gonna have the Q and A right now. Um, in case your questions will not get mentioned today, feel free to reach out to us on social media or via mail. And then we are happy to answer your questions and give you further information. Despite this, also a little reminder again, we mentioned it already in webinar one, but we have um, a song creation handbook and especially the chapter two of the handbook contains written material that complements the topic of today. And the material can help those of you who would like to have even more input and insights with the detailed explanations. So check this out. We, you are going to find the link in the chat box and you can download it also on our website. So, but now let's dive into the questions. Yes, I can start. I have a first question here from Angelica in Greece. Um, I read it to you. Um, do you find it easier to compose something for lyrics that are ready or write something first and find lyrics later? Well, for me, it's really hard to start writing music without any context. So then I'm just like goofing around. Obviously, I can play. <laughs> but if I don't know what the song will be about or what I'm writing the song for, then it's like freewheeling in the open air and it's like, um, it's not going to go anywhere. But it does happen that when I know I want to write something about this thing that's been burning inside and it does happen that I write with like um, a melody uh, or with a chords and then I find the words. Mostly, however, I think it works with me the way I showed you guys also in webinar one. So I start with like a, a general brainstorm out of this, a word or a line or a metaphor will kind of come to me or the lines for a chorus. And then once I found the right atmosphere to go along with this, like I, like what just happened with uh, my diary to small example. So then I think now my melody that I put on this kind of draft words brought me to the idea of let it out being the title. And from there, I can continue working uh, on the song, which means that I already have like a main idea for the chorus or the atmosphere of the song and of in which key the song will be or what the speed approximately will be. And then I have a title and a chorus. So I already have quite some ingredients I can continue working on, but they do go hand in hand, as I've been saying. Maybe I have another question from Vagia from Greece. Mm. And the person is asking, how do you connect the music with the lyrics and how do you know where they fit? Mm -hmm. I'm assuming like, how do you know where they fit? It's about placing the words on the, on the music. Mm -hmm. And as for the first part, because actually it's two questions that are being asked, like, how do you how do you choose the right atmosphere for the uh, the lyrics? Is that how can I rephrase it like that? Yes, I would say so. Yes. Uh, so this I think th there is not one right thing. Right. But it does help if you kind of feel what the song, what the atmosphere of the song should be, which is why I put as my first tip, like the imagine the song that you think will go along with your words. Um, because that will narrow all the options of the world down to at least something a little bit smaller in which you can play around and see what works. Um, what was the second part of the question again? Like the first How one was the How do you know where they fit? Ah, yes. Well, you don't. <laughs> this is just the voice in your head again that might... Uh, I don't know... It's nice to play around with this, yeah? So the most logical thing to do when you have a chords progression that you kind of like, what normally happens because we're Western people and we're trained with pop music is that you will place the words starting on the one. So maybe you have a, like, this is your tempo, one, two, three, four, one, two. So the most logical thing to do, and which is also the first thing I landed on with my text, it's to do the... It's time to go out. Da, da. So put it on the one, but it might be nice to turn it around and see if you can land something on the one, which is what I did with the second version. 
I cannot bring it back, but it's nice sometimes to not go under one, two, three, four. Da, ba, ba, da, ba, da, ba. Dun, dun, dun. Da, 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 da. Does it make sense? Like you can you can kind of trick yourself into turning around the rhythm and placing your words differently. Uh, in general, a good clue to know whether you're placing your words right is that there's not too many words in uh, in one line, so you don't go like that. Um, and if it's like very few words in a line, that should be completely fine. You can choose to make them very long to go like, it's time to go, to do it like that, or to make your line short. It's time to go out, quiet, 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 which is also fine. So there's not really one answer. Uh, if you're very unsure about whether you whether you like what you did with the timing of your words on a on a chord progression it it is interesting to just give the text and the chord progression to someone else and see what their little voice in their head is making out of it hope Excellent. that makes sense yes. absolutely I, so. I can see Thank thumbs up from mm. person so yes <laughs> was helpful Great, thank you. Um, I have another question from Slovakia here from uh, Gabriela. I think it's about uh, originality. I think also something we covered in the songwriting. Mm. Um, she writes, how to compose a song that does not sound like every other? <laughs> well, um, most importantly for that is that you, uh, is that you, sit with it so probably it is going to take you from the most original unoriginal ideas and the most straightforward ideas um you're going to start there probably and that's not there's nothing bad with that you can you can even enjoy it you can also stick with that like there's nothing wrong with a good pop song if you do however want to um, give it something that not everyone would do or something original you can either find that in changing one of the chords uh, or changing the, the melody. If you change the melody somewhere just with half a note and find the chord that goes with that specific note, you have something completely different because then you will have to add in a chord that's not part of an original, like a, a typical pop song. Um also, what might help is once you start making the music to not go for the four chord progression. So don't let yourself be tricked into these four chords. Stay away from them. Find two chords that don't really go together very logically, but that do sound nice. And then you're already on the track of writing something that is more original. Mm. And then other things that you might want to change to make it like less like any other song is... You can put another rhythm. Uh, so, for example, I sometimes really like, and I have to force myself because this is not logical, to write something in, in five over four or seven over four, which are like rhythms that are not common to our Western ears. So they will make something completely new as well. Uh, or you can change rhythms. So you're doing it very fast and then you're going to write a very slow part or something like that. Adding dynamics can make it like very uh, different from any song. So having a very soft part and then opening up and making it loud, that's already very personal and original. Yeah, and not being too scared of being in the process of writing a very nice song that does sound like other songs. Like in the end, the words are new, the melodies is new. There are thousands of songs that are written on the same four chords and some of them we all love. We know them by heart. We, we, we like these songs. So there's nothing wrong with writing a song like that. Yeah, and your message is already original, so don't be scared. Yes. Uh, we have another question from Jakub. Mm -hmm. person is asking how to compose a song when I don't have or play any musical instrument. Mm. 
Well, in, in case you don't play any instrument, um, there are ways to write a song uh, a cappella, but it might be hard. Like, I'm not saying don't do it. I'm, I'm definitely encouraging you to do it. This can easily be done wherever, on the bike or in the shower or whatever, while humming these melodies, right? Or while finding a rhythm to place them on. You don't need to be a musical genius uh, in order to find a melody uh, that goes along, just a melody and a rhythm. And then you already have quite something that could turn into a song, especially if you bring it to a musician. But also don't shy away from collaborating with a musician. I think if you don't play any instrument and you don't feel too comfortable uh, or too self-sure about whether you can do it all by yourself, then see if you know someone who plays an instrument or um maybe a group of people or uh i don't know don't 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 be shy to collaborate also there's on the internet quite some uh apps and some uh, software that you can download and use in which you for example can just extract a beat which might really help you to make your text rhythmical or to make it work in a in a loop because that's in the end, that's what you want, yeah. For a chorus, for example, it's something that you want to be able to do two times or three times in a row, for example, so you can loop it, so it always has the same length, and it kind of lands where it started, so you can do it again and again. So these things you can also do with software or with the help of whatever people. Um, in the worst case scenario, you can even take a. This is not what I prefer, but but it might help you just to get started. A song that exists and put your own text and see if you can make a text on this melody. And then bringing this idea to someone else, they will probably be able to make something else out of it. Because in the end, you want to write your own song and you don't want to put new words on a yet existing melody. But don't be shy to kind of uh, work with that, like get inspired by that or make it work. Great, thank you. I have another question here from Max in Germany. Mm. Um, how to how to get in a creative mode for song composing? He's asking. <laughs> yeah, I I would say how to get under. Well, probably it's good to get into a place uh, for yourself. Yeah, so. Uh, where you feel comfortable and where you feel like no one's gonna walk in just randomly at any because it's quite a it might be a vulnerable process yeah so if you're in a place where you can either lock the door put a note outside don't disturb or whatever so you feel safe and you also feel like there's not uh, people listening in on you immediately right like I remember when I started songwriting, I was very attracted to this idea of, of going to the park and writing a song. But basically, when I ended up in the park with my guitar, I was way too shy and uncomfortable to start writing a song there, right? Like, it's like, oh, my God, everyone can hear me. Like, this is not... But maybe this does work for other people. But I would suggest you listen to whatever uh, gut feeling you got going in there. Uh, also, it's nice to, but this is something you'll have to figure out along the way. For me, I I, I like writing in the night. Uh, so most of the songs I write after eight o'clock, I think. Um, and But most songs I finish in the morning. So once once I'm really like uh, ready to uh, perform or to, to, to get it out, it's in the morning that I finish it with like a fresh head and with the coffee and with the sunlight. And uh, so, so every step kind of asks for its own circumstances uh, and to get into the creative mode. I think you just have to like uh, know yourself and know what feels good uh, for you. I suggest if you start jamming with people that um, either you already know them also in a musical context, or you get to know them in a musical context without putting your first lyrics and this very personal story immediately in there because that might feel like a big big step so maybe if you're getting to know a guitar player and then just start off singing covers or just goofing around writing a little blues I don't know like doing something uh, with lyrics that are not very precious to you uh just getting to know each other musically a little bit and also personally if you don't know the person very well and then maybe a next time bring your text 
and and your ideas and um so 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 protect yourself a little bit but also open up this is also like a balance that you have to find thank you i think this is a very good point um I mean, you, you mentioned several times, don't be scared, but uh, of course, there's so much vulnerability uh, yes. around this uh, process of writing and doing, uh, creating your own music. Yes. Um, yeah. 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 It's like, a, and it's a skill, right? It's also something you, you will practice, like writing music. It's like a muscle or like, uh, wasn't that what, what Juan also said? Like creativity is a muscle. You can train it. Like this is, this really is uh, if this is the first time you're gonna write a song then allow yourself at least the idea of writing a second and a third song so it's not all dependent on on this first time that you're gonna try this right like and, and learn from it be gentle with yourself like if in case you 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 got hurt because you asked for feedback and and you got like criticism or something like that then just protect yourself for that for the next time or 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 start over be like okay whatever I don't want to write the song anymore but I do want to write a song about this like um it is a very uh delicate thing that you're about to do but it's beautiful and it's going to be so powerful and something you're going to be so proud of if you make it to the end of this whole process and 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 then I hope it's not your first song yeah and keep going I actually have an, another question. Uh, wow. It's again from myself. And uh, <laughs> and it's a similar question we had in the um, writing part. But a lot of people um, working with our methodology, Songs for Right, Songs for Change, they do this in a group. And they need to facilitate yes. groups uh, through the process of um, songwriting, song composing. You have experience with this too. Um, is there any one, two, three tips in that very context of working with a group when it comes to the composing of music to a song? Mm, yes, I will give, and these are tips, yeah? So they're like, um, they might not apply for every situation. Um, I would suggest that if you work with a group of musicians, um, I would suggest that they know each other a little bit. Yeah, so uh, they're comfortable with each other and they kind of know from each other what they do on an instrument. Um, then the second thing I would suggest is that you don't, uh, you don't go with the idea of someone that already has a whole idea. Like there might be a guitarist who's like, a, yes, I still have this. And it's like a whole song that he has lying around, right? So don't, don't go with that one. If you're going to go with that, just take like a part of it and be like, okay, we're going to take this part. And then, because otherwise it's going to be hard, like getting the other people on board, but they'll only be facilitating this idea, right? Like, so... Then my third tip would be to not linger too long on what it should be. So if you have a, a nice ingredient, a nice element, something is someone is doing something, like one melody maybe, and like a, and you're like everyone agrees it's nice. Then okay, we're gonna go with this. We're not gonna try uh, perfect this or try something else or maybe we should do this. No, we're gonna go with this one. So construct the the music on the given ingredients that people are suggesting and build on that so if we have this part okay so what can this do and what can this do um then i would suggest with the group of musicians to try uh at least try uh, a very soft and naked version of whatever it is that you're doing so it's very empty and very um very little elements so the beat might just be the one two three and the guitar might just be doing rang, you know, not too full. And also you make a version that's very full. So it's like everyone full out in the game. So you kind of know where the limits of the dynamics of the game are gonna of the song are gonna be, right? Like this this is like the 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 minimum and this is gonna be the maximum of the song. And then what I would do probably is have this chorus first, then deriving from the chorus the the verse making uh, uh, a melody on it for an introduction so you have an intro to the song which will also already feed the people writing the verses 
with a possible idea for their melodies um, and not making it too complicated. I think if you're writing a group song, you don't you don't want to be too scared of doing the the four chord progression or whatever, you know, like because uh, this is something you can always add on to the next meeting or you can suggest in the next time you see each other. But you don't want to uh, uh, cut down the creative process of a group too fast. Like if they're flowing with something and everyone's on board, then don't don't let any of the participant or yourself be too uh too strict on oh this is too this is this is not good because this is too popular this is not original um you want to keep it going that's basically my my main tip if you have the group making music joining in coming with ideas creating melodies then that's the perfect place to be you don't have to uh drift away from that yeah right Thank you very much, Ryan, for answering all these questions. Um, of course, we missed some of the questions, but uh, feel free to reach out to us um, in a later step. And I think with this said, we are coming to an end of today's webinar. Um, thank you, Ryan, for the last two webinars. It was uh, really informative. I learned a lot. Uh, thanks for taking <laughs> us with you on the whole journey of song creation. Um, yes, it's pleasure to out. <laughs> talking about this. Very nice. Thank you for inviting me because it's like this is such a process that you do. It's not something you think about. Like this is the first time I'm speaking about what it is that I actually do. So thanks for giving the opportunity to sit down and think about it. Yes, thank you very much. Also, thank you to the audience. Thanks for that you joined us today. And um, we are happy also to welcome you in the next webinar, in the third webinar, uh, where we will learn something about song recording. So now that you know how to write your song and the lyrics, how to compose your song, and how to record actually your songs. So stay tuned. Um, I'm excited to learn more about this. And thank you to all of you for joining us today. Thank you. Bye bye. It's time to out. Bye bye. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. Ciao ciao.